million dollar question that a lot of people ask themselves is does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me? Some of us we search high and low within ourselves, without ourselves looking for signs indications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me. As a non-Muslim before I converted to Islam um, this was something that I always asked myself. You always ask yourself, does God love me? And then we start to look for little things in our lives that are either indications that God loves us or he doesn't. For me, I would look at my circumstance and situation and say, well, if God loved me, why would he take my mother away from me? If God loved me, why would he do this to me and do that to me? And we, I would use these as signs or indications that maybe he didn't love me. Maybe God didn't love me. And when you put yourself in a situation like that, you make yourself vulnerable to shaitan. Shaitan will come to you and he will begin to, you know, uh, follow up those thoughts that most of the time he created. And in some instances, some people will suffice themselves with the fact that they love God. I love Allah. And that's, that's enough. You'll see people, you know, rappers, actors, you know, with crosses around their necks, engaging in behaviors that is, you know, nothing short of, you know, satanic or um, sacrilegious. But they will hold on to the fact that I love Allah or I love God and that is enough. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, لَيْسَ الشَّأْنْ أَنْ تُحِبُّ اللَّهِ لَكِنَّ الشَّأْنْ أَنْ يُحِبَّكَ اللَّهِ Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, what is important is not that you love Allah, but what is important is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Does Allah love you? Well, anybody can do anything and say, well, you know, I love Allah. Hubbi fi qalbi. My love for Allah is in my heart. I love Allah. And they will do some of the strangest and weirdest things. Because in their own minds, they believe that this justifies, their love of Allah justifies them. As the Arabs they say, Al Ghaya la tubarri'u al wasila, that the goal does not or the end does not justify the means. That just because you love God, that is not an indication for you to go and do something that is ungodly. But as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, Laysa sha'an and tuhib, tuhib Allah, lakin a sha'an and yuhibbuk Allah. What is important is not that you love Allah, but what is important is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Why? Because anyone can say that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But loving, even you loving Allah has signs. As the scholars mentioned in the line of poetry, Ta'asil ilaha wa anta taz'umu hubba, hubbahu, wa hadha mahalun fil qiyasi badi'u, law kana hubbuka sadiqan la ata'atahu, fa inna al-muhib li man yuhibbuhu muti'u. That you, you claim that you love God, you love Allah, and this is a claim that, you know, is, is, you know, unfounded because you disobey Allah. How could you say that you love him and you disobey him? So this claim to love God is really, there's no reality to it. He said, Lo kunta sadiqan la That if you were truthful in your claim to love Allah, then you would obey him. Because when you love someone, you obey them. When you love someone, you obey them. كان رجلا يطوف حول الكعبة فقال يا ربي هل أنت راض عني ويمشي خلفه إمام الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى فقال يا هذا ما هذا الدعاء هل أنت راض عن الله سبحانه وتعالى حتى يرضى عنك فقال سبحان الله من أنت يرحمك الله قال أنا محمد بن إدريس فقال كيف أرضى عن الله وأنا أتمنى رضاه فقال الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى إذا سرورك بنقمة كسرورك بالنعمة فأنت رضيت عن الله جل وعلا إمام الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى is making tawaf around the Kaaba and in front of him is a man raising his hands making dua and from what Imam Shafi could hear him saying he said Ya Rabbi, hal anta radin anni? Oh Allah, are you pleased with me? 
Oh Allah, do you love me? Are you pleased with me? And Imam Shafi behind him says to the man, I have a dua. What, what is this dua that you're making? He said, Hal anta radin hatta yarada ank? Are you pleased with Allah so that Allah could be pleased with you? How are you asking Allah is He pleased with you? What have you done to earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure? Are you pleased with Allah so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you? So the man said, Subhanallah, man ant, ya rahmakallah. Subhanallah, the words were, you know, very inspiring, very touching. He said, who are you? He said, I'm Muhammad ibn Idris, Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, well, how do I earn Allah's pleasure? How do I become pleased with Allah while trying to gain his pleasure? Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala gave him some very powerful words of wisdom. He said, إِذَا سُرُورُكَ بِنِقْمَةً كَسُرُورِكَ بِنِعْمَةً فَقَدْ رَضِيْتَ عَنِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى He said, if your delight or your pleasure with adversity is the same as it is with prosperity, then in fact you are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning if you feel about Allah when you are in a good situation, the same way you feel about Him when you are in a bad situation, a trying situation, a difficult situation, then know that you are truly pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there's some of us that are only pleased with God when He is satisfying our desires. When He is feeding us, giving us what we desire from Him, then we are pleased with Him. But the moment He tests us or He takes something away from us, he takes one of our children, he shortens our provision, restricts our money, restricts our provision, and then قَالَ رَبِّي أَهَانًا That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you wealth, we say قَالَ رَبِّي أَكْرَمْ That Allah has honored me. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricts your provision, قَالَ أَهَانًا We say Allah is humiliating me. This is a sign that Allah is you know, displeased with me. And so therefore we become displeased with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. As one of the Salafs, he said, لو أدخلتني النار لأخبرت أهلها أني أحبك That, oh Allah, even if you put me in the hellfire, I would tell everybody in the hellfire that I love you. That no matter what your circumstances is, no matter what situation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places you in, it does not change the way that you feel about him. إِذَا سُرُورُكَ بِنِقْمَةَ سُرُورِكَ بِنِعْمَةَ فَأَنْتَ قَدْ رَضِيْتَ عَنِ اللَّهِ That if you are the same as you are when you are tested, as you are when you are in a good situation, then in fact you are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the signs that indicate, there are many signs that indicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. One of the signs is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses you. He uses you to open doors for other people. You become the mat by which other people begin to walk over. And sometimes we may look at that as, well, you know, this is humiliation. But no matter what you experience in your attempt to open up doors for other people, that is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned an authentic hadith collected in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed was Sahahahu al-Albani Shaykh al-Albani declared the hadith to be Sahih Qala qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna allaha idha ahabba abdin ista'amalahu idha ahabba abdin ista'amalahu qalu kayfa yasta'amiluhu ya rasulullah qala yuftahu lahu amalan sarihan bayna yaday mawtihi hatta yarada anhu man hawlahu وفي رواية قال يوفقه لعمل صالح قبل موته ثم يقبضه يقبضه عليه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إن الله إذا أحب عبدا استعمله. That when Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves a servant of His, He uses him. He uses him. So the Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, how does Allah use you? He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you tawfiq, will give you success to do righteous deeds. يُفْتَحُ لَهُ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا He will open up a door for you to do good deeds. 
and then take your soul while you are in the commission of, the, of those good deeds and the people around you are pleased with you. The people around you are pleased with the deeds that you died upon. In another narration, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you to do good deeds and then take your soul while you are in the commission of those good deeds. The scholars who explain this hadith, they say, the scholars, they say that if you want to see whether or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, then look at how he uses you. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses you. And this is important for imams and da'is and al-qura, the, the reciters of Quran, because these people are in the forefront of the ummah. And people sometimes treat them like crap. Imams, da'is, students of knowledge, leaders in the community, they catch it the worst from the people. They spend their days and their nights trying to figure out how to help rectify this ummah. Saving their own souls in the process. Trying to save their own souls and the souls of their own children. And at the same time, do the work of God. Do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the process of all of that, they catch it the worst from the people. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in some instances he caught it the worst as a leader in the community because you are expecting that people are going to respect the work that you're doing. You expect that people are going to love you for laying your life down. People enjoy their lives. They party, they enjoy their dunya while you stay up at night planning and designing and creating new ways for people to come closer to the religion, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While everyone else parties and enjoys life, you are literally going gray hair, losing your hairline, losing hair, losing sleep, trying to figure out how do I help the Muslims love Allah, love Islam. And to come on the day of Jumu'ah and have someone come up to you and say, you know, Imam, the khutbah was good, but you went a little long. I have to get back to work. Andy shughul. To have someone stop you in the middle of the khutbah and say, you know, we have to get back to work, brother Imam. To have someone come up to you after the Jumu'ah is over and critique your khutbah. Someone who has never studied Islam a day in their life, yet and still, they got so much to say about your khutbah. They have so much to say about your presentation and what you say, they catch it the worst. Even the Prophet وسلم, was distributing the war goods to his companions. So a man said, The Prophet وسلم, as it was his habit, he would distribute the war goods, the spoils of war to his companions. Sometimes he would give some more than he would give other, others. And there was hikmah, there was wisdom in that. So one of the individuals, he said that this distribution is unfair. It's unfair. Here he is judging your wisdom based upon his own perception, right? You do things out of wisdom, out of hikmah. You give this one more than you give this one. This one has been with you from day one. Min al usra, from the difficult times. And this one is a new convert to Islam. Hadith al bin Islam. So you may give him more than you give him. His iman, his faith is mustaqar. His faith is firmly rooted in his heart. It's not going anywhere. This person barely has any faith. So you give him more than you give him. Out of hikmah, out of wisdom. And then you have this genius who sit behind looking at you from the outside. Judging you saying that this is unfair. This is unfair. Nor is it being done for the sake of Allah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Wallahi, I'm going to go tell the Prophet sallallahu what you just said. When he came and he told the Prophet sallallahu what he said, his face became red and he said, Waymullah, wa man 
يعدل إذا لم يعدل الله ورسوله قال رحم الله موسى قد أوذي بأكثر من ذلك فالصبر The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's face became red, irritated, agitated by the 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 complaint and the the perception of this individual. Here I am trying to use hikma and dealing with people, and you are judging me from the outside only because you got a snapshot and you don't have the whole picture. He said, "Woe be to you, by Allah, who is going to be fair if Allah and His Messenger is not fair? If you accuse me of being unjust, then who is going to be just?" If Allah and His Messenger is not just, He said, "May Allah have mercy upon Prophet Musa. He was harmed with worse than this, and he was patient. He was harmed with worse than this. So, as a leader, sometimes you need to know that if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using you to open up doors for other people, even if you catch hell, if you catch the worst of it." You are still the best of the people because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using you to open up doors for other people. And when you step into this position as an imam, as a leader, leadership position in the Islamic community or in any realm, you have to understand that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using you to open doors for other people. So you're always going to feel like the one that is stepped over, the one that is stepped on, the one whose face is marred in the dirt. You're always going to feel like that, and that is okay. But know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves you. That is a sign, a telltale sign that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves you. So the scholars say, "Ida arata an ta'arif maqamak عند الله سبحانه وتعالى فانظر في مستعملك." That if you want to know your position with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then look at how Allah uses you. He said, "Ida ahab Allahu abdan istamalahu fi khair." That if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves a servant, He uses him for good. He uses him for good. He said, "Wajjal al-hawaij al-nas ilayhi," and He places the needs of the people at His beck. He places the needs of the people in your hands. The people need you, and even though they don't appreciate you, even though they step on you and step over you, it is still an indication that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves you. And we get confused because we're looking for the people to love us instead of looking for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to love you. He said, "Wa fatha ala yadhi bab a'mal salihah." He said, "And Allah will open up for you the righteous deeds, wa sta'malahu, and He will use you as a tool for good for people." He said, "Fakulla ma ra'ita insan and man Allahu alayhi bi amal salih." بدعوة أو تعليم أو بناء مسجد إلى آخر ذلك فعلم أنه يحبه. He says so if you see that Allah subhanahu wa taala you see an individual who Allah has made it easy for this person to give da'wah to Allah to teach people the religion of Allah to build masjids and to do any act of good that will be beneficial to the people then know that he is an individual that Allah subhanahu wa taala loves. وإذا أردت أن تعرف مقامك عند الله and if you want to know how or what your position is with Allah, then look at how Allah uses you, brothers and sisters. Don't leave this world having let everyone in it use you except Allah. Don't leave this world having let everyone use you, because people are going to use you. People are going to exploit you. People are going to use you and abuse you. But the one that you should let use you is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So don't leave this world having let everyone else use you, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Let Allah use you for good. Let Allah use you to open up doors for other people. هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.